All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, you guys, which means that it is vlog day. And yeah, I've got I've got a pretty good little vlog planned out for you guys. I'm going to do that thing where I put all of the timestamps down here so you can see uh, what's coming up in the vlog, uh, what's there, what's missing. I believe we have the majority of the segments this week. I know I definitely have a retro vaping segment prepared. I think we're going to drink some beer. Absolutely what I've been vaping. Favorite comments of the week. Uh, viewer mails. I got a bunch of vape mail to open and we have some news and advocacy to cover as well and if I'm being look if I'm being real real honest I'm a little bit over the like standing here camera angle and I know that I'm constantly I don't know like constantly fiddling around with stuff constantly changing stuff and I really like this for a for a really long time the whole standing up at the beginning because it feels a little bit more free a little bit more energetic right and it's cool it's fine and it works it, it works good I just uh I, I uh, uh I just don't know how I feel about it anymore you guys remember this camera angle Angle. Like any of my old school followers, you remember this camera angle? I used to shoot every single vlog from this like corner camera angle and my monitor was here and I love it. I'm bringing this back and I'm bringing it back in a huge way. We're going to shoot a lot of the vlog here. Ah. Ah. Okay, I need to shave. But I do, I really love this camera angle and I'm bringing it back. We're gonna bring it back for the majority of the vlog, but I also, I had another idea. I kinda wanna shoot the intro over here. Like, this is pretty cool over here. I really like this. So now that that's all out of the way, Welcome, welcome to the vlog. I want to do that thing right now. Actually, first of all, I'm still not 100% better. You can hear it in my voice and in my nose. There might be a little bit of sniffing and my voice sounds really weird inside my head. It feels like I, it sounds like I have my nose plugged. So it probably sounds like I have my nose plugged on video as well. I'm trying, I'm slowly getting better, but I feel good enough. Fuck it, let's do a vlog. But before we get too far into this vlog, I wanna do that thing that's my new favorite thing that I like to do where I hear from one of my subscribers. So right now I'd like to hear from Coral. So, hey Nick, uh, my name is Coral, I'm from Puerto Rico, but I'm currently living in Connecticut, and I've been a, f a subscriber to your page for like a year and a half now. I've been vaping for like two years, and I've recently got into like building and everything. I just want to give a shout out to you because you're doing an amazing job, and I love your videos. I love how you're spreading the word about advocacy and everything, because it's really important right now, and I just, if you could like... I just started a vape review channel and like I'm getting the word out and everything. And if you could give me a shout out, oh uh, my YouTube page it's Dope Vapes PR, as in Puerto Rico. <laughs> just wanted to let you know that you're doing an amazing job and vape on. Yeah, absolutely. Coral Boom, you are definitely shouted out. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for the kind words. Um, we're gonna shout out her YouTube, which is Dope Vapes. Uh, Dope Vapes PR. That's right. Dope Vapes PR, Puerto Rico. Haha, <laughs> get it? <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. Coral, thank you so much. Um, I'll throw a link down to Coral's YouTube down in the description of this video if anybody wants to check it out. I haven't watched any of her videos, but seems like a very genuinely nice person nice and caring person. But anyway, yeah, Coral, thank you so much for sending in a video. If anybody else out there has any videos kind of like that that they want to shout out, they want to shout anybody out, you can send them on over to nick at groomgreen.com. Those emails don't usually get replied to right away via email, but I do watch and save all of the videos for future vlog use. So you can send them on over, nick at groomgreen.com. So what I want to do right now is just talk real quick about what I've been vaping. First things first, still heavily using that Zenith Chroma A kit. I did a review for this uh, on Tuesday. If you want to go check out all of my thoughts on this, you absolutely can. But I will say it's just such a bang and mouth to lung vape. This is loaded up with. Uh Ah yes, this is loaded up with Glacier Banana 5050 PGVG, just regular old nicotine, no salt nicks for me. I just, I can't handle it. I just can't handle my salt nicks, you see? But this is 12 milligram and uh, it, it's a great vape, great vape. I've also heavily been using that VGOD Mech Pro V2 kit, the one that comes with an atomizer. I've been using it a lot. It's been, it's been pretty rad. I hope to have a review for this very, very soon, but that is loaded up with some Deep Cuts Dragon Shake. Of course, that's Mr. 
uh, Eric Vinyl and Vapors Juice. He does two. He does the Cruller and he does the Dragon Shake. And, and me and Kent tasted the Cruller earlier in a vlog, um, but I don't think we tasted the Dragon Shake. And I will say, I think I like the Dragon Shake a little bit more than the donut flavor. But this little V-God mech has been banging. And that is a very, very dying battery. I vaped this all night last night. I finished working around 7 or 8 p.m. last night, and I went upstairs to go watch Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. And uh, I vaped this all night long, uh, single 18650, so battery life isn't amazing, and this battery uh, definitely needs to be replaced. Also, I decided I decided to get back out my Hexome. Where's my bottle of juice? I got back out my uh, red and black Grim Army Hexome. I have the black uh, TM24 Pro Series on top, and I have the shiny matte shiny combo. The AFC is matte, but the rest of it is shiny. It looks very cool. DHD nub tip on top. Loaded up with Smacks Pony on Acid, and I've been dripping it out of this little, uh, you know, sort of toothpaste tube looking guy. And I wasn't sure what to think about this at first, but it's been surprisingly good. These don't really uh, leak. Uh, leak a little bit, I guess. You get a little bit left on there. But I've found that overall, these don't really leak like those like those Chubby Gorilla 60 mils or the Chubby Gorilla 120s. It's kind of a weird, uh, really weird design. You can also not see your juice level in these, which kind of annoys me. But it's something I'm willing to put up with for Smacks Pony on Acid just because I love this juice so much. I don't remember exactly whose coils or what build I have in this right now. I think these are Turk coils. I think these are 0.17 Turk Aliens, Hexome V3, uh, the Black and Red Grim Army Edition. I just adjusted it to taste. It's set a little bit past 50 and it's, uh, it is a stellar vape. So many clouds, bro, clouds. I've also been hanging in there with that Asmodus Lustro mod. I did a review for this just this last week, uh, or it got published early. It was supposed to go up Monday, but it actually went up Friday. So this review's been out there for about a week now, and re-watching that review, I think I was, I feel like I might have been a little bit too hard on the Lustro. It's, it's weird, okay? It's got that IR sensor, which is weird and doesn't really work all the time. And it does have this external LED thing that I actually really like. It doesn't bother me in any way, and I'm actually kind of okay with it not having a function. I know in the review I said, wow, this would be so much cooler if it had a function, but it kind of just looks cool enough to where it doesn't really need a function. I don't know, it's just, it, it's a really durable mod, and I and I like holding it, and I like vaping on it, and it just, it, it's, it's a lot of performance. It's instantaneous performance. As soon as I press the button, it's firing at the full voltage, and I feel like I'm using a little bit more high performance of a mod, I guess, when I'm using this. I don't know what chip Asmodus used on the inside, but it's great, it gives me plenty of power, and it fires right away, which is something I really like. Also still hanging in there with the Google RDA on top with the DHD tip, and uh, this is loaded up with, you know, another one of my favorite juices, Surf Satisfying. I seem to have a few juices that are just in my rotation, just juices that I love that I just constantly keep vaping. Surf Satisfying is one of them, and, and this is a banging vape. 0.23, 70 watts. Great, awesome, really love that vape. Also still in heavy rotation is that Wake Mod Co. Littlefoot kit that I bought at ECC. I, I just love it, I love the colors, I love the tank, I like vaping from it. I really like the juice that I have in the inside from Culinary Confections, this is Bonanza, which looking at the cover, or looking at the cover artwork, you know, it's bananas, walnuts, and splashes of cream with what looks like a, a cookie underneath, and that's kind of exactly what this tastes like. This is a, a, a very well-crafted, balanced juice. I feel like a, a lot, a lot went into making this flavor. It's it's very unique, it's very distinct, and it's very complex, and, and that's why I really like it. And on this little foot kit, that Wake Mod Co. Wake Tank, it's just a little flavor banger. I love it. Delicious. I actually taste the walnuts in this juice. And I have one of the new uh, DHD tips for the wake tank. I can't remember what she ended up calling these. I can't remember what she ended up actually calling these, but I'll, I'll find them on the website and I'll put a link uh, down in the description for the tips for the Wake Mod Co. as well. I have also heavily, that has not really ever left my side, it's that damn Jabo 
Squonker, the Luxotic BF box. I still haven't had a chance to convert this over to a silicone bottle. I don't, I kind of don't want to. I kind of am waiting for Wismec to release a silicone bottle specifically for this device. I had another silicone bottle that I tried doing the little silicone bottle trick and it didn't quite work. The bottle I had wasn't quite the right size and everything to go in there, so I'm just using the stock bottle, but I have the Alliance Vapor Tech Flave 22 on top, which I am thinking about swapping out to that Cyclone Mods Entheon. I haven't got enough time with that Entheon yet, and I've been using this Flave 22 like crazy, and I think it would be kind of cool to compare those two atomizers together because, I don't know, it's not that they're very similar, but they, they kind of accomplish the same thing. It's a little bit of like a low profile, cool little single coil flavor banger guy. And on top of this, it just it just works so well. This is loaded up with another one of my favorite juices from Smacks. This is Lick It. Lick It. Can't get enough Lick It. Oh, yeah. That's good. That's a good vein. And lastly, but not leastly, this is something I picked up at ECC. It's from uh, Vape Envy. They did the Loch Ness. This is the this is the baby Ness. This is the little single 2700 or 18650 single device or single battery uh, device. And I've been using it with the K Fun on top with the bell cap from one of my one of my subscribers. Andrew sent me this bell cap. And every time I mention the bell cap, I have to shout out Andrew because I grew up in the vape industry grew up in the vape industry. I started vaping and the K-Fun was like my favorite thing ever. I just loved it. I had multiple K-Fun Light Pluses. I had tons of accessories and drop tanks and all this stuff for the K-Fun, but my one white whale that I never got when I was a huge, huge K-Fun user was the bell cap. And Andrew had a spare one. He sent me a bell cap. And now this, this, this tank will never go away. It will never go away. I will always be using this K-Fun Light bell cap combo just because it's so reliable and because it gives me such a goddamn good vape. This is loaded up with 12 milligram Atlanta Peach Leaf from the Namber Classics. They're all 50-50 PGVG. They go up higher nicotine. It's one of the first flavors that we did and I still am having a, quite a love affair with it, but this is a 0.7 single coil. I don't remember the exact build that's on the inside, but it's just a round wire build, 0.7. I've got it sitting at a modest 14 watts. And this is also uh, a little DHD uh, drip tip in here. This is the Chiquita or the Paquito or something like that. I don't remember the exact name of this one either. I apologize, but I'll put a link down in the description uh, to all the DHD stuff that I use just because I really like it. But I'll throw links down in the description to where you guys can check it out if you're interested as well. This has been awesome, awesome mouth to lung vape. So good. So good, so classic. Just even just vaping this K Fun, it just takes me back in time. It takes me back to like 2012 when I was just K Fun crazy. Just K Fun Light Plus. It's all I want. It's all I want to vape. I love it. it Reminds me of that time, and it also reminds me why I like the K Fun Light Plus so much. And once again, Andrew. Thank you for the bell cap. Okay, maybe that wasn't actually lastly. I have one last thing, and this was actually really inspired by Kent. When Twisted Messes was over here, and he was talking about, he's like, well, I designed the Twisted Messes 24 to be like, you know, my, my perfect vape. It's my ideal vape, and I need it on a box mod that goes over 125 watts, because he's like, I like high wattage, I like this atomizer, I like my airflow, this is, I designed this to be my perfect vape. And that kind of really got me thinking about like, what is my like ideal vape, just a setup that I absolutely love, that is tried and true, and that has never let me down in any way. And so I went ahead and set this up. This is an original recipe recoil. There are MTurk Aliens, they are low. It's a 0.11, I believe in here, but I'm running it on a dual parallel MOSFET protected, unregulated Titan box, blue Titan, blue recoil. The, the first, I believe uh, there might be some disagreement about this, but I think this is the first tip that DHD ever gave to me. I think in 
Niagara Falls. At the Niagara Falls event in 2015, in April 2015, uh, I think that's where I got this tip. Anyway, put it on there with the metal head. I loaded this up with, uh, got the Culture Cloud sticker on there, culturedclouds.com. Loaded this up with Rainbow Sherbet in the dark, and uh, one of my subscribers recently just completely blew open my mind hole regarding my own juice. Now, Rainbow Sherbet in the dark is something I've been vaping for a really long time. I think it's a great juice, and it's something that I've been vaping for years and years and years. And every time I vape it, I taste the same thing. I taste that rainbow sherbet flavor that, that I love so much. And then one of my subscribers was like, hey, have you ever noticed that uh, rainbow sherbet in the dark kind of tastes a little bit like pixie sticks, like not an overly sweet kind of pixie sticks flavor in there too? And I'm thinking, no, no, no. No, of course not. That's not that's that's not the flavor, damn it. Sure enough, I take some toots on uh, Rainbow Sherbet in the Dark and suddenly now all I can taste is fucking pixie sticks. It's the weirdest like mental state change that I think I've ever gone through where it's my own juice and, and I vaped it a ton and all it takes is one person to go, kind of tastes like pixie sticks. And now when I vape it, I taste a... Uh, I taste a pixie stick flavor. It's just, it's just very weird. It's just very disorienting. So yeah, that's what I have been a vaping. What I want to do right now is talk about some news and advocacy. So we're going to move back over the desk so we can do that. The news and advocacy, there's one little segment this week that might be a little bit, ah, uh, a little bit touchy. I'm going to tread lightly and hope I don't lose any subscribers in the process. But what we're going to do right now, jump back over to the desk. It's time for news and advocacy. News and advocacy, yeah. All right, so we are here to do some news and advocacy. The first thing, the very first thing that I wanted to mention in the vlog when Kent was here, we did a $2 sale. We did the uh, I love Kent and I want the and I want the Pro Series or something like that. Oh, I love Twisted Messes and I want the Pro Series. So I I'm just going to put all of the winners on the screen right now. There are four winners. These are the comments that are the recipients of the $2 sale. Please, if you're watching this and you are one of the people whose name and comment is displayed right now, uh, shoot me a DM here on YouTube. I have rarely ever used the YouTube messaging system, so please DM me here on YouTube and uh, I can get all your information to Kent and he can ship you out the Pro Series. But congratulations to the winner and congratulations and I mean thank you what I meant to say is thank you to everybody that uh, took part left a comment it was uh, it was some real good it was some real funny comments in there as well and also a huge thank you uh, shout out to Kent Twisted Messes for putting that together for all of us we do have some other news that I wanted to talk about oh I also wanted to mention this uh, I am going to be opening up some more spots in my Patreon my Patreon is not something that I generally talk about in depth here on the vlog but I do have a Patreon it's a great group of people uh, I do live streaming on Wednesdays on Instagram Instagram. We do lots of $2 sales over there and we get lots of uh, exclusive coupon codes from various vendors as well over there on the Patreon. If you feel like that's something that you would want to be a part of, I'm opening up some more spots over there uh, as of today. So if you want to head over there, check it out, see if it's something you're interested in. If you are, cool. If you're not, yeah, that's totally cool too. And the spots are there if anybody's interested. And what I did is I, as I capped it off, I capped off my patrons. I was like, no, we're, we're good. This is good. This is fine. We're great. I got a great group of people over here. We're all set. We're doing fine over here on Patreon. But just because people have been asking, yes, there's going to be some more spots available on the Patreon now. Now, now, next, now, actual to some actual news. Uh, Kane. First thing I wanted to mention is Kane sent me over a great YouTube video where they do not really a, a, a super scientific study, but it is sort of a science experiment where they compare <laughs> vaping. I don't know. I don't know why I do that. Have you heard that happen? in my voice before where I go to inhale and it's like cloggy like I'm like I I, I don't know why that happens <laughs> anyway like I was saying this isn't like a uh, you know this isn't a study this isn't scientists doing a study this is a person doing a science experiment comparing vaping to smoking uh, he, he does it pretty well and I thought it was overall really very interesting when you when he finally compares that cotton that was vaped through versus the cotton that was smoked through, I think it's pretty, uh, 
undeniable, clear as day, which one is far, far more worse for you. So thank you, Kane, for sending that video over. I'm going to throw a link to it down in the description. Feel free to watch it uh, and share it around because I think it's actually a really great video. And the next little news item that I wanted to talk about was uh, by far the most emailed in uh, news item. Uh, tons, I mean, a multitude of subscribers sent me this news. So, so thank you for sending that my way. And I'm talking about the whole... Uh, uh, heavy metals. There was there was a study done recently where they had found uh, some sort of heavy metals, right, were found in e-cigarette vapor. And it wasn't from the liquids necessarily. I don't think, I don't even know how that would be possible. They say it's from the heating elements that we use. So things like canthal and nichrome and nickel and chromium and not chromium and something else, stainless steel. The, there was heavy metal poisoning or the, the chance for, for heavy metal toxicity or something something like that. Again, I'm not a scientist. I just read what I have in front of me and I make a decision based on that. But a lot of people, a lot of people sent this over to me. So what I'm going to do is link down in the description to the IFL science version of it, just because it seems to explain it the best way that I understood it. The article says scientists at Johns Hopkins University have found that there's lead, arsenic, chromium, manganese, and nickel in the vapor of modifiable vaping devices. As you can imagine, these are not good for you. Long-term exposure and persistent inhalation of the metals have been linked to lung, liver, immune, cardiovascular disease, brain damage, and even some cancers. And I always say this, whenever there's uh, new scientific studies or evidence being done on the safety of vaping and e-cigarettes, I absolutely, definitely want to know about it because I'm vaping to reduce the harm in my life. That's why I'm vaping. And so if there is something in there, which I really still don't think that there's anything in there. But if there's something bad in there for me, yeah, of course I want to know about it. I'm doing this to reduce the harm in my life. I want to know if there's something harmful in there. And in the same breath, we also need to realize that one study where they find maybe possibly something bad in it isn't the final just nail in the coffin like that. Well, that's it. Vaping is boom, done. And when we get a study that is very, very positive, that doesn't mean that, oh, vaping's great. It's safe. It's it's, it's 100% safe now. And, and and vaping's great and it's gonna save the world. There's not these two extremes of either vaping is really, really good for you or vaping is really, really bad for you. That's a that's a horrible mindset to have, especially in the world of tobacco harm reduction. Harm reduction. Uh, so the senior author of this, uh, who is Anna Maria Rule, she is a PhD. She said it's important for the FDA, the e-cigarette companies, and the vapors themselves to know that these heating coils also current that that these heating coils as currently made seem to be leaking toxic metals, which then get into the aerosols that vapors inhale. Um, that is uh, that kind of doesn't really make sense to my brain. So I read through this whole article. It seems pretty on the up and up. Obviously, I would like to see what, what, where, where this science goes. Like with all science, I'd like to see where this science goes and where it ends up. And so what I have to say about this is I'm going to leave it with Dr. Konstantinos Farsalinos. He is a cardiologist in Greece who has been studying electronic cigarettes, vapor, and the effects they have on the human body as well as the heart. Uh, this is what he posted on his Facebook. Facebook regarding this particular study. He said, for those asking questions about the latest study on metal emissions from e-cigarettes, here is my comment. The air quotes, significant amount of metals the author reported they found were measured in UG kg. In fact, they are so low that for some cases, chromium and lead, I calculated that you need to vape more than 100 mils per day in order to exceed the FDA limits for daily intake from inhalational medications. The authors once again confused themselves and everyone else by using environmental safety limits related to exposure with every single breath and apply them to vaping. However, humans take more than 17,000 breaths per day, but only 400 to 600 puffs per day from an e-cigarette. And the gist of what I believe he's trying to say is they found a very, very trace amounts of this stuff and then extrapolated it into being something dangerous. As Constantinos, Dr. Constantinos Farsalino said, he calculated that you would need to vape more than 100 mils a day, and that's only to exceed the FDA limits for daily intake, meaning that the FDA has 
limits. They have these safety standards set in place where under this line, you're okay. Over this line could be dangerous to you. And in order to get to that line and pass that line, you would have to vape 100 mils of juice per day. Uh, that's in, that's insane. That's insanely excessive. Even the heaviest, heaviest, heaviest vapors of just not, you know, just constantly vaping. Let's take Kent, for example, and I'm not throwing Kent under the bus with this example, but he is a heavy vapor. He vapes a lot. He vapes huge volumes of vapor. I don't think I've even seen him go through 30 mils anymore. I don't even think he goes through 30 mils in a day. I don't even think it's possible to vape 100 mils per day. If you take 17,000 breaths every single day, you would have to have every single breath be a vapor breath. And that's just not reality. That's not how these products are getting used. So huge shout out to uh, Dr. Farsalinos for posting that on his Facebook. Huge thank you to all my subscribers that sent me that news article. I'm going to be posting both the news article, uh, Constantinos Farsalinos' Twitter and Facebook pages, as well as his eCigaretteResearch.org website, where you can read about all the work that he is doing with vapor, vapor products and how they affect the body. You can't fake science. And that's what this comes down to. You can't fake science. It's just not possible. There are very rigid rules in place as far as repeatable experiments, peer review, things like this. Keep science, science. And you can't fake it. You can't fudge the numbers. So if anybody is doing any sort of fudging or extrapolating into unreal or unnormal situations, the science is going to show that. The science might say there are heavy metals in these vapes, but they are so low. They are trace amounts. It's the same thing with the TSNAs. I remember, not to get on another tangent, but way back in the day on the VaporCast podcast, we were talking about the TSNAs, and they were only in trace. I mean, trace amounts in the e-liquid, trace amounts. So getting a, a trace amount of something hazardous like a TSNA or like a, some sort of chromium manganese heavy metal vapor going into your mouth, getting a trace, trace, trace amount of that is worse than getting none, right? I mean, you can't deny that, but it's still just a trace, just a trace amount of these things so low in fact that it doesn't it would it would take a hundred mils of juice to exceed the fda limits for daily intake okay i'm sorry i'm talking in circles right now but that's where i'm gonna leave that and like i said in the description to this video i'm gonna put links to the i fucking love science article on this heavy metal in vapor products as well as dr farsalinos's uh twitter facebook and the e-cigarettesearch.org website so cool well, that's where I'm going to leave that. Thank you, everybody, for sending in that article. Um, I did have something else that I wanted to talk about as well. I kind of had two more things that I wanted to talk about. A lot of people uh, sent me this article as well from vaping360.com where they're talking about Scott Godlib. Scott Godlib is the new uh, chair of the FDA. He's the new head of the FDA. And the big headline on the article says, Scott Godlib is preparing us for the flavor ban. Now, that is a, a very alarmist sort of headline on there. I, I don't believe that Scott Gottlieb is preparing us for a flavor ban, but what's going to happen with the FDA, and this is what happened earlier on with vapor products, is they're going to have a big comment period. They are talking about flavors. The FDA is bringing up the discussion around flavors, and it's up to us, the vapors, to comment, to be respectful, comment on the FDA when they have this open comment period, I, I did it last time. I'm, of course, I'm going to do it this time. They have an open comment period where they're basically just gathering the public's perspective on this issue. Uh, Scott Godlib had said on his Twitter, uh, the troubling reality is that e-cigarettes are the most commonly used tobacco product among youth. Um, also, Mr. Godlib, uh, 
they are not tobacco products. Just want to clear that up right out of the gate. E-cigarettes are the most commonly used tobacco product among youth. Preventing youth from initiating the use of any tobacco products, including e-cigs, is critical. Protecting future generations from all nicotine-containing products remains a top priority. FDA's efforts to seek and restrict youth access limit youth appeal. We've also expanded public education efforts to include messaging, RE, uh, the dangers of youth e-cigarettes. Okay, hey, hi. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt my own vlog like this, but uh, I shot that segment yesterday and I got a little bit ranty. I got I got a little bit emotional. I got a little a little bit fired up about the subject matter. And I, I realize this is this is a very touchy subject for a lot of people, but I just wanted to say this. I have a real hard time believing the sincerity of elected state and federal politicians who, when something horrible and tragic, like the Parkland High School shooting happens, they offer up their thoughts and prayers, yet turn around and demand that flavored vapor products be banned and restricted so we can save the kids from being attracted to a product that has helped hundreds of thousands of adults stop smoking and, according to the Royal College of Physicians, is at least 95% safer for you than traditional tobacco cigarettes. Uh, nobody that I know, including myself, supports underage vaping. Vaping should be 18 and over. But stop trying to ban flavors under the guise of saving the kids because I, I just don't believe that anymore. So what I would encourage everybody to do is when the FDA opens their open comment period regarding the topic of flavored vapor products, that you would take part in that. Just write it, just tell your story, give your points of view, be respectful, but flood their website with comments. And I think that even the end result, even if flavors ended up getting uh, scrutinized or regulated, I don't think it's going to be the disappearance of all flavors. I think we're going to have some pretty rigid standards in place as far as what can be on the labels, what can be on the bottles, what things you need to disclose on the bottles. I personally don't think this is going to be a complete federal flavor ban. And I think what we need to be really concerned with is all of the local flavor bans going on, like places in San Francisco and in Northern California where they're trying to ban flavors. So when that comment period happens, comment and fight it. Let's fight this like we have fought everything in the past. It's been an uphill battle since the beginning and I, I have no intention of slowing down anytime soon. And, and that's where I'm going to leave that. So the last thing, the last thing I wanted to talk about here in the news was an article that uh, Bob, Bob sent me this over about the lawsuit in PA. PA has been fighting the 40% Pennsylvania wholesale and retail and floor tax for, oh shit, a year now, almost two years now. And <coughs> Oh, pardon me. And there's a, there's an update. And like I do with most uh, everything in the vlog, I'm going to put a link down in the description to where you can read this article for yourself. This blog post, this is on kingdomvapor.com. Uh, it says, many people have been curious as to what's been happening with Kingdom Vapor's wholesale lawsuit against the 40% tax in Pennsylvania. The process has taken a painfully long time to get an actual court hearing, but things are finally starting to happen. On January 10th, the first hearing took place to address Kingdom Vapor's wholesale request for a preliminary injunction. Kingdom Vapor claims that the only items subject to the TPTA are e-liquid and complete e-cigarette devices, while parts and components are not. Uh, Jessica Leitner, chief of e-cigarette enforcement for the DOR, testified that if a component part has another use besides vaping, then it is not subject to the TPTA. A decision was received on January 1st. Thirst? A decision was received on January 31st from the Honorable Judge Renee Conjubular. As a result of the January 10th hearing, the request for a preliminary injunction was granted in part. This prevents the DOR from pursuing administrative and cr criminal 
penalties during the pred, pred pendency during the pendency of this litigation provided that kingdom vapor continues to file its monthly reports and pay the 40 percent tax on the same items in which it has been collecting and paying tax in the past and pay the 40 percent tax on the same items on which it has been collecting and paying the tax a final decision on what products are taxable will ultimately be made in a separate hearing scheduled in april in the decision the court stated that kingdom Vapor made a strong statutory construction argument regarding the interpretation of the TPTA. The TPTA does not specifically provide for taxation of the component parts DOR says are separately subject to taxation, nor does the TPTA use the word integral. The court notes that the statute imposing a tax is required to be strictly construed by a separate order. The tax will expedite the argument of this case. I am uh, I am completely overwhelmed by that information. I have to take my hat off. Hats off to Kingdom Vapor. Huge shout out to Kingdom Vapor for fighting, I mean, on a very real level, fighting this 40% tax that has been going on in PA for years. I, I believe this 40% tax came uh, on the books in 2015. Was that the last time I was in Pittsburgh? Was that the last VCC event in Pittsburgh? It was on the books. It was about to go on the books then. It's been on the books. And thankfully, there are still people like Kingdom Vapor fighting for Vapor's rights in PA. So give them all the support that you can. Like I said, I'm going to post a link down in the description to this blog post where you can read it. There is a full version of this that I'm assuming uses lots of other huge words and anagrams. Anagrams? No, that's not the right word I'm thinking of. You know, when it's, uh, when it's TPTA or FDA, you know, Food and Drug Administration, shortened down to FDA. I don't know why I can't think of the word of that. And, and now it's gone too long. The, jo the joke doesn't work. But I'm assuming that it's big and complicated. And if anybody wants to read it, you are more than welcome to. I've clicked on it. I've looked at it. I've tried to read it. But uh, litigation is not my strong suit. <laughs> I found it to be very, very confusing. But like with everything, I'll put a link down in the description to where you can check it out. Uh, so that's it. That's it. That's all we got for news and advocacy. I'm going to wrap this up by saying what I always say. If you're interested in any sort of news or advocacy call to actions that are going on, join CASA, CASA.org. Join up. It's free. And you get calls to action sent to you when the call to action is in your state. If there's something, if you're in Iowa and there's a legislation coming in Iowa, CASA will email you and say, hey, this is coming. Here's what we can do about it. Text this message, fill out this thing, call these people, and we can try to get ahead of this. So absolutely, good Lord, absolutely join CASA. It's it's a crucial step in uh, in helping get vaping safe, legal, and accessible for adults. That's all I want. I just want to vape. I just don't want to smoke cigarettes. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for the news and advocacy portion. So what we're going to do right now, oh, we're going to stay right here because this is awesome. I am going to grab a bunch of vape mail. I'm going to bring it all over here. It's time. It's time. It's time to open some vape mail, guys. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, we're up here in my kitchen. We're going to taste some beer, and the beer that we're going to be tasting is one that, uh, this is the one that I, Eric, Vinyl and Vapor, sent me. Um, I apologize, Eric, if you're watching this. One of the other beers, the brown ale, I think, actually, like, uh, exploded. I don't know. I don't want to say it exploded, but I pulled it out of the fridge and the top, the whole rim of it was like, burr, like bowing out. And I was like, Whoa. I felt like Homer in that episode of the Simpsons where Bart takes one of his beers to the paint shaker. And then when Homer opens it, his house explodes. That's kind of what I felt like. And so I took it over to the sink and I was like, and I opened it and sure enough, it was a fucking geyser of brown ale just shooting into the air and I had to empty it down into the fridge and it, I, that's the one I didn't get to drink. But I'm really excited to try this No Limits Hefeweizen from Two Roads Brewing, which I believe is based out of Connecticut and I'm going to be drinking it out of a Duval uh, glass because why not? Because I can, because I'm allowed. 
Ah, the aroma is that of beer. Hefeweizens are, uh, are, are lighter in color. They're a little bit crisper. I would describe Hefeweizens as a crispy beer. Yeah, look at that. That looks beautiful. This actually looks like, uh, what's that other beer that I used to drink all the time? Hogarden. I used to drink Hogarden all the time, and this looks visually like that beer. The head just, just kind of gone. The head just kind of dissipated into nothing really quickly, didn't it? But anyway, this is a beer that you can't really see through. It's kind of, uh, you know, opaque. There's some bubbles coming off of the bottom. I'm just shocked. I mean, that head really disappeared in a really quick manner. But anyway, no limits. Hefeweizen. We're just going to dive in. Cheers. Here's to you guys. It's delicious. Uh, it tastes like a hefe. It's nice, it's sweet, it's creamy. Hefeweizens are, are creamy, at least the ones that I've had are, are very creamy. I get a creamy component of this. It reminds me of a less intense Hogarden. Hogarden has a very distinct uh, Hefeweizen type of flavor and it's very predominant. I almost would describe that beer as like, uh, I can't say this without sounding negative, but it's like a, uh, it's kind of like a dank, sort of situation, like a musty, dank flavor going on, which in, in some tasting circles is a negative attribute. I'm using it as a positive attribute. It tastes dank. It tastes musty and dank. And that's kind of what I get from this, although on a much lower scale. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. That's good. I just want to make sure that this isn't a crazy amount of alcohol. Okay. 5%. Good. We're safe. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't bring a lot up here to do any sort of vape pairings with. In fact, before we even get to the vape pairings, I, I have to look at Beer Advocate. I just, I have to look at Beer Advocate. I like to see, pardon me, already burping. I like to see what, uh, what other people think of this beer. And uh, I like to read, I always like to read the top reviewer. You know, there's always that top reviewer in the reviews. And I like to see what the top reviewer has to say. Wow, a lot of this is just ratings with no actual like uh, flavor description of the beer. Okay, here we go. This person gave it a 3.7 out of five. Hazy golden straw color, not nearly enough head for the style, and very little lacing. That's true. I've noticed that too. Smell, wheat bread, banana, apple, and clove. Uh, taste is just a hint of wheat bread, and then the fruits dominate with apple banana paired together. Lots of clove arrive mid-palate with a peppery spice bringing up the rear. He's, uh, he's getting a lot more out of this beer than I am. To me, I go, yeah, that tastes like a Hefeweizen. Additionally, my nose... <laughs> is still uh, nothing. I mean, I, can, I can't breathe through my nose, so my palate, my tasting palate right now is gonna be, yeah, it's, it's shot, it's dumb. It, it, I'm not gonna be able to taste anything. Mouthfeel light to medium body with moderate carbonation. It lacks that creamy mouthfeel I like in a hef. I, I, I get creamy from this. I mean, I'm not saying that you're wrong, sir, but I, I definitely get creamy from this. I can't taste anything, but I can feel mouthfeel, and this has a very creamy mouthfeel. Super creamy, bro. Creamy for days. Creamy all day. Don't ever watch New Girl? Schmidt from New Girl? All day. I could do this all day. It's funny. It's a it's a funny show. Overall, I like the tweaks. Bit of a nah. I would prefer more banana and a creamier mouthfeel. Okay, well, whatever. That guy's just wrong because I get a very creamy mouthfeel. I don't get any of the subtleties that he's talking about, though. It tastes like a Hefeweizen. It's creamy. There's a little bit of fruitiness going on. And then there's that kind of musty dankness going on as well. Uh, the, the juices that I brought up here to vape are, are not going to be a great pairing at all. In fact, depending on where I put this in the vlog, you may not have even seen this mod yet. But don't worry, we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> in fact, what I brought up here to taste was the mod is from the vape mail segment, which hasn't been seen yet, and the tank is from the retro vaping segment, which hasn't been seen yet, but the juice on the inside, I'll let you speculate and see what you can see. I'm not going to talk about it, but the juice on the inside is the Poet Sweet Black Tea. I brought Sweet Black Tea and I brought Yig because those are like beer pairing juices, only I didn't realize I'd be tasting a Hefeweizen. I might pop downstairs real quick and just see if there's another uh, liquid that would go better with this beer. Hang on. Okay, so like I said, I originally brought up Poet Sweet Black Tea and Yig, which I know are not going to be good pairings, but just try them anyway, right?
okay. The Poet Sweet Black Tea actually isn't that bad. It kind of complements this juice fairly well. I actually think that Sweet Black Tea would pair much better with Hull Garden than it would pair with this beer. And while we're at it, we'll just we'll give Jaeg a try, even though it's, it's not going to be good. I don't think it's going to be a good pairing, man. No, no good. So what I ran downstairs and got, I'm out of breath right now. Just went up and down the stairs. You gotta give me a sec here. And I apologize, my, my kitchen is, is not clean. There's no atmosphere squash. There's no atmosphere limes. There's atmosphere napkins. What I ran downstairs to get was the, uh, this, the Luxotic BF with uh, Smacks Lick It. It's peach, peach, Hefeweizen, peach cream, Hefeweizen. It's creamy, it's fruity, peach, cream. I feel like that could be a thing. Let's give it a try. Oh, that's fantastic. That's good. That is a very good pairing right there. They, they complement each other really well. This actually, that, that juice is sweet and it takes some of the sweetness out of this. It makes this taste like a drier beer than it is, but I still like it. I still like that combination. The other thing I brought up here was that V-God Mech and the Dragon Fruit Shake because I thought Dragon Fruit, I don't know, Hefeweizen, plus it's Eric's beer. I feel like maybe I should vape Eric's juice while I'm tasting Eric's beer because Eric and Eric, 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 Eric. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I just felt like I said his names, uh, his name too many times in a row right there. All right, Dragon Shake. Let's give it a try. That is good. That is also, that is also a good pairing. The Dragon Fruit has a really interesting, unique flavor that I'm not really accustomed to. I don't run across a lot of dragon fruit in my day-to-day -day life. I don't taste a lot of dragon fruit. And so I only know the flavor of dragon fruit from e-liquids. I've never actually had a real, in real life, IRL dragon fruit, but I will say that the dragon fruit shake juice is pairing very nicely with this Hefeweizen. Dang. Okay, cool. That's good. That's great. What a great beer. Thank you for this beer, Eric. I really like it. it it's interesting. It's not, I, I, I'm, I, I am a big Hefeweizen drinker. I love trying out new ones. And uh, thanks to you, I got to try Two Roads No Limits Hefeweizen, which is something, uh, you know, I, I may never have got to try out here in sunny San Diego. So thank you for sending that out. I hope everyone else had a beer or enjoyed a beer with me or is about to enjoy a beer for the rest of the vlog. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's what we're going to do right now. So I hope everyone has a beer because uh, I don't know what segments left. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the burp. <laughs> it's what happens when you drink beer. I challenge anybody in here watching to drink beer and then try to speak afterwards because you'll burp. It, it, it'll just happen to you. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, that's it. We're going to, I don't know what segments next because I don't pay attention to my vlog notes. So back to the vlog. Or I shouldn't say back to the vlog. I should say onward with the vlog and, and a beer and a vape and then now onward with the vlog so yeah i got some uh, i got some vape mail here to open including this including a tube and i was gonna say when this first came in i was like there's no way this is vape mail but it came from beyond vape which leads me to believe this very well could be vape mail in a tube i don't know if this is the new uh standard for beyond vape packages <laughs> but uh we're gonna open it eventually we're gonna open it aha Oh, it is, uh, there's some juice in here. There's some Winter Delight, uh, tiny little salt nick bottles. What is in here? Why did they do this? Uh, there are some more salt nick bottles. There's other stuff in there. I just can't get to it, damn it. Beyond Vape, this is the strangest packaging I have ever seen, ever. Interesting way to ship juice though. Hey Nick, just sending you over the Fall Delight High Nick bottles in 30 milligram and 50 milligram and some Winter Delight as well. You can throw the winter into your $2 sales if you please. I also threw in the art I was telling you about at ECC. I think you'd appreciate it. I drew these up quite some years ago and they were just collecting dust on my drawing table so I thought I'd send them your way. Cheers, oh cool. Cool. Oh, cool. That's cool. Dave kill Dave uh, says, P.S. Dave still can't stop thinking about your dreamy eyes. <laughs> All jokes aside, uh, don't forget to go to Resident Brewing. That's right. Awesome. Cool. Minor. Uh, that's cool. Awesome. Uh, and there's art in here. Oh, there is art in there. 
how do I get you out, Art? Uh, let's see. I'm gonna have to get creative here. That's clearly not working. Uh, bundled up right in the middle. It goes from about here to here, and it's tightly wound against the outside of it, and I cannot get it out. I can see right through it. Yeah, but I cannot get that out. One way or another, it's gonna happen. Ah, all right, so you wanna know how I got it out? It took me like, I don't know, 15 minutes. I was trying to like put stuff in there and like push it out and I got my tweezers for some reason. I'm like trying to pull the art out and then I just took the whole tube and I was like, ha! Just shot the art across my room. So here's what we have. Oh, holy shit, that's cool. That's fucking rad. That is so cool, dude. I, I love this. I would like to frame this, and I would like to hang this somewhere in my office, please. Ewok skull. And then there is a, uh, yeah, good. The severed head of Jar Jar Binks. This just, you get me. You get me, and I like it. I love this on so many levels. The dead, headless Jar Jar Binks. Uh, that's amazing. I have a bunch of stuff that I need to get framed, and so this is going to go into the I need to get that framed pile because that's awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you, Beyond Vape, for the juice. Thank you so much, bro, for that uh, art. It's very, very cool. Very cool. Oh, this is, a, uh, this is from Broadside. This is an Admiral. Wow. That's pretty. Oh, mother F. He put Grim he put the Grim Green logo on there. That is so fucking cool. Feels like a chalkboard, which is one of my least favorite things, but fuck that looks cool. God, that is a beautiful looking mod. That is just a uh... That's a real nice looking mech we got right there. I've never used any of the broadside stuff. I've never used an Admiral. I know Ruby Roo has an Admiral that she absolutely loves. I know she has a review for it on her YouTube channel. If you wanted to check it out, this is going to, uh, this is gonna get used. I'm gonna use this. I might need, uh, I might need Ruby Roo to give me a, uh, a tutorial on how to use this broadside mod. Oh, wow, the switch is literally just an O-ring. Whoa, that's crazy. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you for the Admiral. That's awesome. Uh, I can't wait to get this built. I believe this is an RDA in here as well. The Culverin. Oh yeah, look at that. Wow, that is pretty. That is a very cool drip tip on top as well. Oh yeah, shit, look at that. It's just a, uh, it's just a big two post. Big two post deck. Okay, that looks pretty. That just looks, that just looks pretty. Wow, that uh, that uh, Culverin has a little bit of a whistle to it, doesn't it? Yeah, that's a that's a very high pitched whistle. Oh, it kind of goes away there if you adjust it a little bit. Anyway, cool, cool, very cool, very cool. And as always, when we're going through this vape mail, if there's something that I see that I'm like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna set that up and we're gonna build it in this one, then. Then, then I'm gonna do that, and I'm I'm on the lookout. I don't know. Is this a thing? Is sh should I build this mech? Should I build this mech broadside Culverin combo right here? I have been on a mech kick lately. Might be kind of cool. I, I wanted to see how quickly tarnished this naval brass will get, oh, if at all. But I have a feeling, yeah, it's it's definitely gonna tarnish. Oh, holy shit! Holy shit! Okay, okay. Okay, I didn't mean to overreact like that. So, Defiant Designs, Drip Tech DS. Uh, he's doing it alone. He's doing it his thing. That's the answer. That's my final answer. Lots of people, multitudes of people keep asking me about the Drip Tech DS. Like, where are they? Where, you know, Goon isn't doing them anymore. 528 isn't doing them anymore. Who's doing it? Greg fucking Stevens is doing it. Defiant Designs, Drip Tech DS in a very, beautiful sort of brushed aluminum right there. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm excited about this. I, I wanna try this out, I wanna build it. I think this is the newest, most bestest version of the Defiant Designs Drip Tech DS. I think there were a couple things he actually changed between the version that I have and this particular version, although I'm not sure what those things are or how big of a, you know, how big of a scale he changed things. It could just be little tiny fit and finish things, but that's rad. That's rad and I'm excited to squonk it. Wish, I don't know what to put on top. I was thinking about putting out, I've been thinking about breaking out that Bonza again. You know, I was on that, uh, I was on the live stream with Jay Hayes and Bogan and Matt Cully suck my mod and I was talking to Bogan and I was like, shit, man, I just, I've never reviewed the Bonza. 
I'm sorry. I feel like a dick because I never reviewed the Bonza. I used it a whole bunch. I just, uh, I just never, I just never reviewed it. So I think I'm going to put that together on this. Uh, I don't know for next week, maybe for next week, maybe that'll be a thing, but there you go. I'll try to track down a link defiant designs, drip tech DS to where you can pick these up. They are very, it happened again. Did you hear it? They are very cool and they're made very well. And Greg Stevens just happens to be a really great guy, really smart guy. And it's got the, uh, the drip tech DS and it even comes with a full exploded view. Please note when loading batteries, good stuff to install the batteries don't over tighten refilling the bottle the this the that everything comes with all of it there you go so cool all right cool and this is from Coilmaster diy kit mini oh this is like a uh cool oh that's actually kind of cool this is like a uh you know a travel fiddly tool, you know, something you would use for your atomizers or for your RTAs when you're building. It has ceramic te tweezers, uh, pliers, and a multifunctional screwdriver body. Actually, that's something I want to open. And there's two of them. No, nope, there's three of them in here, which you know what that means. $2 sales. What's going on here? Coil Master. Ain't that a thing? Big, uh, there's multiples. I have these big Chinese New Year. Happy Chinese New Year. Coil Master. Should I hang this? Should I hang this on my door? I probably won't do that, but cool. Thank you. Thank you, Coil Master. Hello, what have we here? That was my, that was my best Lando impression. These are huge bottles of juice. These are, these are huge bottles of juice. I genuinely did not know that Chubby Gorilla made bottles this big. This is like 200 mils doesn't have a volume on it. It just says uh, three milligram. This is huge. This, I mean, this bottle is gigantic. Here, this is side by side with 100 mils. Look how much bigger this bottle is. But anyway, what's in the bottle is Dis One Reserve. So Dis One is a custard. It's a custard. It's a custard juice. Uh, I, I vaped a bunch of it in, in the past. I think it's a great flavor. And uh, I got I got some more uh, I got some more Dis One and I got some juice. Uh, Dean. Dean. I can't say the name Dean without saying it like the Dean from the show Community. Dean. He's one of my favorite characters on Earth. Hey Nick. Reserve is best around two months. Ooh, two months. Really? I should let this steep for two months? This is a fresh batch. I wanted you to enjoy it through its stages. This is the vanilla custard I was looking for. Best wishes, Dean. Dean from Coil Vapes. Cool. And I got some this one, that one stickers. And there's some more juices in here as well. Look, look, the, look at the size of this bottle. That's in, that's huge. That's so much e-liquid. We should have a, uh, how long is it going to take me to get through this bottle? I know we had one for the fairy wings. Have I updated the fairy wings? I got real, real bored of fairy wings real, real quick. Don't get me wrong. It's a great flavor, but uh, uh, all day vape, it is not for me. Okay, coil vapes, sweet pea, funnel cake. Cool, well, cool. Thank you for the juices. Uh, I'm gonna put these in rotation to be tasted randomly. I do kind of like these bottles. Are these even Chubby Gorilla bottles? Ooh, that's a mint tobacco. Vanilla tobacco, that actually sounds cool. I would like to do this for a random juice tasting. It's not gonna happen in this vlog because I already have a juice picked out for this vlog. But vanilla tobacco, it's kind of an, uh, that's kind of an appealing flavor profile to old Grim Green over here. Ah, something from Augvape. This is the V200 mod. I've seen a few of these on Instagram recently. Ah, there are two. One is red and one is black. Ooh, which one do I want to open up? Should I leave the black one for the $2 sales or should I open the black one or should I leave the red one for the $2 sales? Uh, uh, uh. Well, I don't have to decide right now. Here, I'll just make it fair for everybody. I'll just open both of them. It's fine. Wow, that's kind of a, uh, I don't know. I, I, I genuinely don't know how I feel about this right now. Where's the fire button? Oh, please don't be a touchscreen fire button. That's gonna really upset me. Got a little like jog wheel right here. It doesn't spin around, but it kind of toggles back and forth and that's how you adjust your wattage. I wanna vape something. Grab that ghoul and put the ghoul on here. Cause I still don't know where the fire button is. Where's the fire button? Seriously, where's the fire button? Okay, 
Where's the instructions? I only have one package left and I think it's liquid, so this Ogvape V200 mod might be the mod that we're setting up and it's happening in real time. Oh, okay, it's a clicky press. Okay, I thought it was gonna be like a touch sensor, but it's a clicky press. The top of the display is what clicks and presses and fires. Okay, let's set my wattage up real high. Oh, it adjusts in one watt increments, I like that. Okay, here we go, 67 watts. Uh-oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, okay, that's actually very cool. Damn, plenty of power? This just feels beefy as fuck. I feel like you could run this over with a car and not cause a lick of damage on it. It is tough. It, it is metal, and it is, uh, this little button it is plastic up here, but it's got a little click pad right here that is... A really comfortably placed. Kind of reminds me of why I like this Asmodus, you know, uh, 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 Lustro. Good lord, the Asmodus Lustro. It kind of reminds me of why I like that Asmodus Lustro. The button position is very similar. You can kind of just hold it like a badminton racket and press the button with your thumb right there. Wow, that's great. And it fires quick and hits hard. The display isn't amazing, but it shows me everything I need to know. 60 watts on a 0.22, 4.3 volts, 1.8 second was my last toot, and it has my two battery level indicators, and not just two battery level indicators, but two battery level indicators with percentage symbols on them. Yes! Finally! Thank you! This is what I want! Shit! Cool! All right, that's cool. That's kind of cool. Okay, so to answer your question, I set up the black one. Uh, the red one is going to go into the $2 sale area. Shit, man. I didn't think I would be that impressed with this. It looks very unimpressive in pictures. I see pictures of this on Instagram and I go, ugh, that's not, that's kind of ugly. It's kind of a little, it's very tactical feeling, isn't it? It's very tactical feeling. I feel like this would be like a Batman Medi kit. Like there would be a seam here and it would go, tss and like open up and be like, there's a little, you know, hydro needle in there and you're like, Tss. it's like, don't worry, you'll be fine in 10 minutes. Very, very cool design. It is very industrious. It's very Batman-y. I think that's why I'm into this. Well, all right, here we go. It's getting used. It's entering the rotation and I'm just going to use it until I review it. Uh, okay, except I was reading the little, and I mean little, instruction booklet here by clicking any buddy i said buddy by clicking any bud the by clicking any button batteries get back to work from standby sleep mode 10 second protection the batteries will be shut down when the power button is held longer for than 10 seconds that's good that standby sleep mode is what bothers me it looks to be in standby sleep mode right now i wonder if i have to wake it up to vape it let's try Nope, you don't. Don't need to wake it up. I'm going to wait a little bit longer, and uh, I'm going to let this mod sit here for like 10 minutes, like 15 minutes, and then I'm going to try to wake it up again and see if that's a reality, because if that's a reality, eh, that kind of sucks. But you know what? That's, that's what using vape products is all about. You use them. You test them. You evaluate them. You find out the things you like and dislike about them. So, sorry, Lustro. You're going to have to sit topless for now because the Ogvape V200 has taken your place. Anyway, I got one last package here that I'm very sure is uh, juice or some, of some sort. This is not what I was expecting, but I am definitely going to set this up. This is the Kilo. Oh, this is the Kilo pod system. So Kilo, Kilo e-liquids have been around in the vape industry forever. I met them ages and ages and ages ago. Great company doing really great things. And they have released a pod system, a pre-filled pod system. There is a smooth tobacco. There is a nutty strawberry lemon berry. There is a menthol tobacco and there is a dewberry fruit. And this is the pod system. Kick ass. Kilo. I hope you don't mind me setting this up. I don't know if this is ahead of schedule or not, but I, I'm interested in this and I want to set it up right now. Yeah, cool. All right. Well, there's your little uh, battery. It's uh, kind of hexagonal shaped, I guess. It's got that rubberized texture on it. I am going to vape the crap out of some lemon berry because that just sounds delicious and it's not a flavor that I've seen in any other pod systems. Pod systems tend to stick to like uh, tobacco, tobacco menthol, maybe like 
sometimes strawberry. Mango was a big one. I know Jewel has mango. I know the Fix. Does the Fix have mango? Fix might not have mango, but I know the Bow has mango as well. And I want to try this lemon berry. Oh, I really hope this is a good pod system. I've been getting uh, a little bit let down here and there from uh, some particular pod systems. There you go. You just remove the uh, yellow silicone covers right there. There's your big pod. That is a large pod. Put this in. Oh, it's magnetic, and it just snaps down. Boom! Stays in. That is very cool. It's got this, like, diamond cutout right there. Well, if this is like a pod system, it should just work right out of the box, so I'm going to give it a try. Lemon berry. Interesting. I felt like it took a second there to get going when I took a drag on it, and that's not something that I uh, that I necessarily find to be a positive attribute. I like it when things, batteries, mods, etc., just fire right away. I hate the pause. I hate that hesitation that happens. So let's give it another shot here. Just got a uh, you know uh, micro USB on the bottom for charging. Doesn't come with its own little fancy charger, which. I'm actually really thankful for. One of the reasons I don't generally love traveling with things like the Fix or the Bow is because I have to bring another charger with me and I don't like doing that because I travel with uh, I travel with a lot. I travel with multiple, multiple mods, battery chargers, cameras, uh, camera batteries, memory cards, all this stuff. And if I have to take another charger with me just to use a pod system while I'm traveling, chances are I'm not going to do that. But I bring a USB, USB mini with me anyway everywhere I travel. And so having the ability to just charge this on a USB mini that I'm already bringing is a huge huge bonus. Something to think about. Wow. Okay. So the, the, it really activated real quickly right there. Um, my, my nose is really still very stuffed up right now, so I'm not tasting a whole lot, which is going to make the very random juice tasting later in the vlog, even that much more interesting. All right. Well, cool. All right, Kilo. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use it. So far, my first impressions are it's definitely a pod system. It's a nice little size. It's a cool little magnetic pod system. It's got that soft rubberized finish button. Uh, you know, the battery activates when I draw on it. And uh, I'm not fully tasting this lemon berry juice because... <laughs> But yeah, there you go. Kilo pod system. What's it called? It's called the Kilo 1K. The Kilo 1K e-cig. Anyway, cool. Kilo, very cool. Thank you, Kilo. Gonna be using that a bunch before it, uh, it gets a full review. I don't know. Might get a full review. Let's see. I'm gonna be doing some, uh, I'm gonna do, be doing some pod systems coming up here. Some refillable pod systems as well. Coming up soon here. That's it. That wraps up the vape mail segment. So what I'm gonna do right now is, uh, what type? What time is it? Oh, okay, yeah, I got time. I got time before lunch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to clean all of this up. I have no idea what's next in the vlog. No idea. Let me check my notes. Well, we are here now to do some retro vaping. And this retro vaping segment, let me tell you the backstory to this retro vaping segment. So the first thing that I set up this week that I really wanted to put in the retro vaping segment was the original Coil Art Mage Tank. I thought, that's cool. It's It's been around for a while. It's something I remember really, really enjoying. And I dug it out. And I was going to build it and wick it and put it all together. And so I built it and I went to go wick it. And I noticed that my positive post on that velocity style deck was just broken. It was just wobbly and wiggly around all over the place. It was causing my resistance to kind of like jump all over the place. And I thought, fuck, what a bummer. What a fucking bummer. Because that was a great tank and I thought it would be really cool to do a retro vaping segment on a really old RTA. And so I'm digging through my stuff and I'm digging through my stuff and I find the Coil Art Mage, not the original Mage RTA, but the Mage GTA. It was the one that had a single coil deck on the inside. It was really easy to wick and I apologize that I have to explain this to you right now rather than showing it to you, but I shot a bunch of videos of me building and wicking and filling this Mage GTA right here. And then I instantly right away just 
deleted it right off my camera. I, I can't believe I did that. I was sitting here and I shot all this video and then I'm getting other stuff set up for the vlog and I was like, whoop, time to format my memory cards. And that's something that I do every time I shoot video. It's like, oh, start clean slate. Let's format the memory cards. So I go through and I formatted all my memory cards and I was like, ah, fuck. So you don't get to see this being built or wicked but I'll try to track down some pictures of the Mage GTA deck so you can kind of see what's going on in there, what's going on on the inside. This came out a few years ago. I want to say it was in early fall of 2016 that this tank came out because that's when I remember vaping it. The messed up thing is I never did a review for this Mage GTA, which is really honestly a huge bummer because it's a spectacular spectacularly good tank. Okay, well not spectacularly good, but it's quite a good RTA. And I'm just gonna call it an RTA because the term GTA never really made any sense to me. It's an RTA, it's a single coil deck, RTA, it functions the same way an RTA does. You build your coil, you wick it, the juice goes to your wicks, goes to your coil, you vape it, you're good. So I've got this sitting right here on top of that Aug Vape, the V200 mod that they just sent me. Uh, I, I like it. I've been, I've been using it. I've been vaping it a little bit with this tank and it's a... Uh, it's a surprisingly, surprisingly solid mod. I'm excited to spend a lot more time with this. But yeah, I got that Mage GTA, Coil Art Mage GTA on top. It's a very simple, I think I have a framed staple in here, single coil, came out to 0.28 ohms. I've been running it at 50 watts. It's been a good vape. This is loaded up with Poet Sweet Black Tea. This Mage GTA has never been like a big cloud chasing tank. You know what I mean? It's always been a little bit more of like a flavor type of tank. In fact, now vaping it now compared to how I used to vape it, I, I vape it a lot differently now. Back when I was using this tank regularly, I was hitting it like it was a dripper. I was hitting it just huge, big, hard lung rips into it. And I really enjoyed that, but using it now, even after having a conversation with Kent about different draw styles and how airflow and different draw and dragging techniques will get different results from different atomizers, giving this Mage GTA a slower, longer drag is a very much more enjoyable vape experience from this. I turned the wattage down on a 0.28, I'm only running it at 50 watts, so the wattage is down. And if I take a longer, sort of slower toot on this, it gives me a, a much better vape experience than when I was trying to hit it like a dripper and just taking these huge, intense lung rips off of it. Slow and steady wins the race. And you still basically exhale a weather system, a very flavorful weather system. I don't know if anybody is still selling these Coil Art Mage GTAs. I looked online, didn't find anywhere that had it in stock. Oh no, never mind. Element Vape has them in stock. Element Vape still has these in stock right now. How much do they cost? $17. $17, okay? $17, if you are interested, if you are looking for some sort of new RTA, maybe check out the older Coil Art Mage GTA because it is still a stand-up tank. My one thing, my one thing that I really dislike about this tank is uh, the airflow is not a very smooth airflow. Depending on how you're dragging on it, like we just talked about, I was trying to hit it like a dripper and now I do it a little bit more gently, but depending on how you hit it, it gets more or less turbulent. If you drag on this really hard, you can hear it, it's loud, and it feels very turbulent. It feels very panicky and turbulent. It doesn't feel smooth in any way. But if you slow your roll a little bit, if you take a longer, slower drag at a little bit lower of a wattage, the airflow is actually pretty reasonable. It's still not very perfectly smooth, but it is a little bit more reasonable to deal with. It doesn't feel very turbulent. And it is such a great vape and it's available. Element Vape has them in stock for $17. It's just 
so hilarious to me that since the Mage GTA came out, it was like here and gone. It was like, here's the Mage GTA. Nobody cares anymore. Okay, it's gone. And and now there's like, here's another RTA. Here's another RTA. Here's another RTA. And a lot of people, including myself, and it happens a lot in vaping, we get really obsessed with like the next best thing. Give me something new. Give me something new. And meanwhile, we have kind of some great products out there already that are now discounted to 17 dollars. Seventeen dollars is insanely reasonable there. For I think when these first came out they were 40, 45 bucks and now they're marked down to seventeen dollars and Element Vape still has them in stock and it's a great RTA. 24 millimeters. It's got a fairly big juice capacity. I think it's only a three mil juice capacity. I'm gonna look. Uh, three and a half mil juice capacity. Three and a half mil juice capacity. Stainless steel construction. 24 millimeter diameter. Pyrex glass tank. Genesis inspired apparatus elevated chamber. Now, I don't know. Uh, don't let that throw you off. Genesis inspired apparatus elevated chamber. All that means is that the deck is slightly higher off of the base and you have a little bit more room to wick and make sure your wicks get in the great position. This is a this is an upgraded thing. I like elevated decks in RTAs so that you can wick it, uh, you know, a little bit easier. Single coil configuration, single four millimeter internal air tube, peak insulators, efficient wicking design, adjustable triple exterior airflow, convenient threaded top fill method, Darlin wide bore drip tip. Did I say Darlin? I can't believe I said Darlin. I haven't said Darylin in a really very long time. This is back in like, I think 2012 was the last time I said Darylin. I just used to mispronounce uh, basically everything. And I mean, I still do, but I, at least I know now that it's Delrin. But they're right. It's so easy. Even when your tank is full, I can just unscrew this right here. Doesn't flood, doesn't leak, doesn't do anything. I could take my juice, bleh, just fill it right to the top. Take my little drip tip here, thread it back down. Juice doesn't gush out the top. I mean, I'm sure you could overfill it and have juice kind of gush out the top, but you top it off, you screw this down. That's it. You're good to go. And it's a sleek, clean looking tank. It's not ugly in any way. I really love the way that this tank looks and I, and I still really like the way this tank vapes. I think this Mage GTA is going to be one of those things that just stands the test of time. I hope two years from now to come back to the Mage GTA and still go, yeah, it's still rocking. Just wanted to update you. It's still rocking. And it's really a bummer. I feel like this tank kind of got lost in the shuffle. I mean, I'm sure me not doing a review didn't didn't help. None of my subscribers really knew about it. It might have been in a Tuesday Bro Tuesday, but I genuinely can't track down if I ever did a review for this. And I have such a horrible memory that I can't remember off the top of my head if I ever did a review for this. But yeah, Mage, GTA, still going strong, still banging, still even looks real nice on this mod from 2018. The Ogvape V200 tank from 2016 still looks cool, still fits on there, still vapes great. Yeah. All right, I'm going to keep this around. I'm going to keep this tank around, A, because I think it's a really good tank, and B, I really do love that Poet Sweet Black Tea Juice that's in here. It just, it reminds me of summer 2017, which was a really good summer for me. Just really good overall. I would like to live forever in that particular time loop if this were a Star Trek episode. What am I even talking about? Anyway, Mage GTA. That's going to wrap this up for retro vaping. It's cool. I'm going to post a link down in the description to Element Vape. 18 bucks. $17.95, I think. $17.95, and you can try out what I consider to be a very good good tank. Anyway, let's wrap that up. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm not going to be doing a getting to know Grim Green segment in this vlog, which you probably already saw in the opening, uh, you know, in the opening timestamp thing. What I want to do right now is uh, I'd like to get into some viewer mails if I could. Okay, so I got I got a I got a bunch of uh, viewer mails that have kind of just been piling up. So I'm just going to dive right into them. The first one here comes from a fellow named Ryan. Uh, Ryan wrote in and said, "Hey, dude, uh, just a quick note about what you said in your vlog about Harry Potter and how you wanted to buy a wand. Well, I'm a grown ass man and I bought the motherfucking Elder Wand, bro." <laughs> 
<laughs> Stay safe, man. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ryan, for that. Uh, I, I do want a Harry Potter wand. And he sent me a picture of his Harry Potter Elder Wand. And if you're not hip to the Harry Potter universe, the Elder Wand, okay, it's, it's kind of a big deal. And honestly, when I was at Universal Studios, I picked up every wand that I could find. I really... I, I like them. I wanted wands. I think uh, I think next time I go to Universal Studios, the next time me and Pickle go up there, which we're definitely going to go again because it's Harry Potter land, I'm definitely going to buy uh, a wand of some sort. Ryan, uh, thank you. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the motivation, I guess, to buy uh, to buy myself a nerdy Harry Potter wand. <laughs> I got another email here from Ryan. Uh, Ryan wrote in and said, "Hey Nick, I know you're a dog guy. I just wanted to share uh, a picture or two with you of one of my dogs. He's just such a cool little guy, and you guys are more than welcome to share this email and these pics in a vlog." And uh, Ryan, you didn't say the name of your dog, so the file picture is just called Ryan's dog. But Ryan's dog is just chilling on the couch being lazy watching whatever that's a fucking cool dog and you're right ryan i'm a i'm a huge dog person love dogs Thank you for sharing your dog with me. Uh, so I got an email here from Louie. Louie writes in and says, uh, Dear Grim, first of all, uh, I make it to the end of every vlog. Every I made it to the end of every third every vlog, every okay. I can't read. Dear Grim. There we go. Here we're off to a good start. First off, I've made it to the end of every vlog every Thursday for the last year. Well, Louie, I, I definitely owe you a hug. And I gave out a lot of hugs at ECC. There is a shocking amount of people that make it to the end of every vlog, and I couldn't I couldn't be happier about it. He says, I like to drink a beer with you during your beer segment. I was wondering, since you usually have a couple of setups at any given time, what is your best advice on keeping the rotating setups fresh and fit for vaping? Thanks for everything, and feel free to use this in a vlog if I happen to be lucky. Taylor from the UK. Absolutely. No, Louie? Taylor. Louie. Louie Taylor. Okay. That was confusing for me. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That is uh, that. That's a great question. I always do have a lot of setups going a at any given time. It's anywhere from, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine to 12 setups kind of going, including like what I set up for myself that I just want to vape and then other things that I'm evaluating for YouTube for a future review, things I'm trying out in the vlog, things like that. The best way to keep them fresh and ready to go is to use them. You have to use them all every day. And I'm not joking. And you don't have to use them all, all day, every day. You don't need to leave the house with nine setups, but make sure that your setups get vaped on every single day. And if you have drippers, don't leave your wicks really, really, really super wet. There's this term that gets thrown out a lot. I use it a lot. I know MTurk uses it called cycling your cotton. And that's where you vape your cotton relatively dry before you drip again. And that's just a really great way to keep your cotton fresh. If your cotton's just sitting there wet, and soaking like in a soupy swamp of juice, your cotton is not gonna, it's just not gonna stay as fresh. It's gonna break down a lot quicker. But if you cycle your cotton, if you vape your coils and vape your cotton until it's a little bit drier, it's gonna extend the life of that cotton. You know, and other applications like uh, sub ohm tanks or coil heads, vape. You have to vape them. You have to vape them every day. If you let a sub ohm tank sit for a few days and that coil head is just submerged in juice for a few days on end, the first pull that you take off of it is going to be weird. It's going to be slurpy. It's not going to taste very well. You're going to have to re-break in that coil head. It's a universal rule for all vaping stuff. If you have vape stuff set up that's not getting used, either use it or break it down because it's not going to do anybody any favors to just sit there and let your coils and your wicks and your coil heads just sit and juice and get saturated with juice and too much juice. It's going to break down the cotton much, much quicker. Vape it. Just vape it. Whatever you want to use, set up as much as you want. Just vape it. I have a ritual where if I'm at my desk, I'm vaping a thing until I swap it out for 
another thing. And this is a perfect example. This is what I'm vaping right now. This is the Og Vape V200. It's been in the vlog earlier. You know, you, you recognize it. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was, uh, that was stupid. But this is just a perfect example of something that is set up that is vaping and I vape it and I put it on my desk and it's my thing on my desk that I wanna vape. And then when I decide that I am done vaping this, like I either get bored of the juice or something or the batteries need to be changed, I'll set this aside to the other thing and I'll go, okay, I'm gonna grab the Hexome now and that's my vape and I'm gonna vape my Hexome. And if I go upstairs for the evening when, I wanna, when I'm done for the day, when I clock out, I'll take like, two things with me. And so upstairs, I have two things to vape and those will get vaped. And then at the end of the day, what I do at the end of every day is I go through my whole house, I go through my bedroom, my bathroom and my upstairs and I collect all of my vape stuff and I bring it back down here into the office, into the home base and I will sit here every single night. Casey can verify this information, but I sit here every single night and I vape all of my setups. I just vape them all because I like to sit here at night in the dark with my LEDs on. There's no computer. There's no camera running. And that's when I do like the majority of my evaluations on products. I'll just sit here and play with airflow and just fiddle around and be like, that's nice. It is. That is easy to fill. That's comfortable. And I'll vape it. And I'll just vape it. And I'll set it down and I'll grab the next thing and I'll be like, yeah, I love this. Love vaping it. And I'll be like, wait, where did this juice come from? What's going on here? Is this a little bit leaky? That's when I do my evaluating is right before I go to bed, I sit in my office and I just vape everything. So my advice would be whatever you have set up, just vape it. I uh, got another email here from Bernd, Bernhard. I'm gonna call you Bernard, even though I know that that's probably not correct, but he writes in and says, hello, Mr. Green, my name is Bernard and I am not a liar. Uh, I had a quick question for you. I've been rocking my Smoke G-Priv for about two years now. Your G-Priv lasted two years? Wow, I think that's the longest living G-Priv on earth. He says, I've been rocking my Smoke G-Priv for about two years now and I keep having problems of it reading my ohms too low. Uh, I know you don't have much experience with this mod, but I was hoping you could recommend a good replacement. I watched your favorites of 2017, and although I like the mod selection, my vape budget hands can't really afford them. So my question is, do you know of any reliable, accurate mods that are on the cheap side of things? I prefer dual 18650s and rarely vape over 80 watts. Any suggestions would be appreciated. Feel free to use my name and message any way you want. Thanks for all you do. Keep on vaping. Yeah, uh, absolutely. R right out of the gate, the first thing I would say, Vupu drag. I feel like you can't really go wrong with the Vupu drag. It's just a very reliable, tried and true, dual 18650, 150 watt. It uses the Gene chip. It's a great, great all around bang and box mod. And the Vupu drag resin has those cool swirly resin doors. Honestly, I've also been having such a good time today with this V200 from Ogvape. This is a durable dual 18650 powerful mod as well. But yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff out there. Um, I'm sure it was in my 2017 video and it might be on the expensive side, but the Loch Ness from Vape Envy, hands down, one of my favorite dual 18650 regulated mods. It's just so reliable, so tried and true. It has never let me down except for when I broke it. Also, Cartel Revenant. I know the Cartel Revenants can be upwards of about like $160, I think, but they are a very high quality device. The last one I'm gonna recommend, as long as you're very, very careful and you never ever drop it on a hard surface, the uh, Basilisk is great. The Basilisk uh, Stentorian Vapor, which I believe is part of Watofo, the Basilisk, I love it. I love that box mod. It's just a very fragile box mod. Not very fragile, but fragile enough to where that when me and Dwayne dropped it on the concrete, it basically just exploded. And not even exploded like, oh, the battery door came open and the batteries came out. No, it was like it exploded. So just be very careful with it. Um, honestly, check out the Vupu drag. It, it might be exactly what you're looking for. Oh, this one is really much more of a, a shout out than a viewer mail. Uh, but Mike, Mike wrote in and I, Mike wrote in. He wrote on in. Mike wrote in and I would like to read his email. It says, hey Nick, my name is Mike and I wanted to share my story. If this makes it to the vlog, it would make my year. Well, Mike, get ready to have your year 
fucking made. And I apologize. It's going to be a little bit of a letdown. I promise me reading your email isn't nearly as exciting as you think it is. But he says, I'm 21 now and I started on the analogs when I was nine and I smoked till I was 18. And that's when I found vaping in your channel. My grandparents are 82 and 85 and have been smoking since childhood. They were my inspiration to quit. Both of them had COPD and couldn't breathe. And because of that, they couldn't walk. Unfortunately, last year we lost my grandpa to COPD and Alzheimer's. I didn't want it to end up like them, unable to breathe and enjoying life in their golden years. May 7th is my three-year anniversary on my harm reduction. I wasn't the strongest at times and I broke down and smoked, but I know that vaping is the way to go for me. I want to thank you for everything you do for our life-saving way of life. And as always, let's keep on vaping. P.S. I'm vaping the Goon 1.5 with a dual-fuse Clapton ohming out at 0.15 ohms, juiced up with mom's pineapple cake at three milligram at a hundred watts on the Segeli 150. Awesome. 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 Well, congratulations on your three year anniversary, Mike. I'm so sorry for your loss and thank you so much for sharing your story with me. You, you, you are absolutely, absolutely shouted out Bump it. Uh, I think we got time. Let's do one more. I got one more here from Zachary. Zachary writes in and says, Hey, Nick, my name is Zach, and you have every right to use this in a future vlog. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm using it, Zach. I was just wondering, how do you feel about an e-juice called antifreeze? Uh, kind of shocked me. Thanks for everything you do, brother. Um, yeah, that is... That is weird, right? Am I alone in thinking that's weird? I think naming an e-liquid antifreeze is... That's kind of weird. You know, it's kind of weird for the longest time. And, and this kind of still goes on um, for the longest time. One of the biggest uh, uphill battles that we had in defending vaping to the world was the antifreeze argument. Oh, you know, there's antifreeze in there. There's there's not uh, there's not antifreeze in uh, vapor products. Just so we're all very clear on that. There is zero antifreeze in vapor products. But this is an argument that not just state and local, but Federally, they adopted this position of, well, there's antifreeze in them. Don't you know that there's antifreeze in them? It was a very scare tactic kind of thing to do. So I feel, I feel like a juice company naming one of their liquids antifreeze is kind of like a middle finger to that whole antifreeze is in e-liquid movement. We know now that that is not the case. There's not antifreeze in it, but I feel like that's the vape industry taking something that was used against us and then using it again. That's the kind of vibe I get from a juice called antifreeze. I feel like that's maybe kind of like a middle finger to the anti-vapors. Like, there's no antifreeze in this, but we're going to name our juice antifreeze. And with that said, uh, I, I don't think that it, it should be named antifreeze. I just don't. I, I think it paints a, a really weird uh, picture. I don't know. I honestly don't know how I stand on this. I keep flip-flopping back and forth. It kind of seems weird, but I kind of get it. It kind of doesn't bother me, but it also does kind of bother me. If someone in a public health committee held up a bottle of juice that said, uh, antifreeze, this juice is called antifreeze. That's not a thing that's appealing to kids. Antifreeze isn't, you know, a, a trademarked, copyrighted, you know, intellectual property trademarked thing. So... Pardon me. It's not that. It's there's not any of that going on. It's it's just a real it's just a real weird name. Okay. It's just real weird. I don't necessarily like it or dislike it, Zachary. I just think it's real weird, and I think that's where I'm going to leave that. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up the viewer mail segment. If anybody else has any viewer mails that they would like to see answered on this show, feel free to send them on over to Nick at GrimGreen.com. Sometimes viewer mails don't get responded to via email, but I do read all of them and I screen capture the fuck out of them just so I can read them and answer them in this here vlog video. I've got a lot backed up, but could always use some more. If you want to send them on over, Nick at GrimGreen.com. That sounded very professional, like a little too professional. Just send them on over, Nick at GrimGreen.com. Oh, so anyway, uh, someday I think my nose will stop being stuffed. And even though my nose is stuffed, we're going to try this anyway right now. Time for a very random juice tasting.
All right, well, we are here. We are tasting. We're going to taste a very random juice. And this was a juice that was sent over to me uh, by one of my patrons, uh, Ohm My Lanta, sent over some juice. I believe he works for Independent Vapor Company or works at Independent Vapor Company. It's a shop. And he sent over some juice. He sent over some toffee caramel, ridiculous stuff that Casey's been vaping. She loves it. But I wanted to try this one in the vlog here. This is called Bell Islander. And right out of the gate, I just want to say, dig these labels. Dig these labels a lot. These are some slick looking labels. Very, very cool. And this is called Bell Islander. And the only description on the website that they give is a blackberry lemonade, which kind of makes me a little bit excited, but also kind of terrifies me just a little bit because let's be honest, blackberry juices in the past have not always been amazing. Blackberry is a flavor that really has the tendency to be a little bit cough syrupy and it's not, you know, it's just the, just just the way that particular flavor is. It has to be blended very well and the recipe has to have the right amount of blackberry in it because blackberry can easily become overpowering and can easily start tasting like cough syrup. With that said, blackberry lemonade Hoping this doesn't taste like cough syrup. Oh, there we go, now it's open. Let's give it a little bit of a uh, knuckle test here. Yeah, uh, it, tastes like, uh, it tastes like lemonade. I actually get a little, I get the blackberry for some reason reminds me of like moonshine. Like I get like a moonshiny component to it. Anyway, I'm gonna be vaping this um, just because it's here and it's recently wicked and cleaned in front of me. Uh, Gold Recoil Rebel RDA on top of my matte black Dreamer Mac. So I'm gonna juice these coils all up and we're gonna vape it. I actually don't know if I should even whistle that song or if Disney's gonna come after this YouTube video and demonetize it. Yeah, vapors. All right, Bell Islander. We're all juiced up. Let's uh, let's give it a shot. Okay, so I'm gonna do that thing where I do in order to taste juice. Keep in mind that I mean, take this juice evaluation with a grain of salt because my nose is very still quite stuffed up and I'm not tasting things at 100% in any capacity. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to vape it a little bit and then we'll come back and talk about it. Well, now that it's properly foggy in here, uh, I like it. It, it reminds me, uh, I get a strong sense of moonshine from this, and I have no idea why that is. This, this tastes like it could be a cocktail. I feel like I'm drinking a cocktail when I vape this blackberry lemonade juice. The lemonade is nice. It's not overpowering. It's a little bit tart. The blackberry is nice as well. They put it in there at a very good percentage. It's very well balanced. It doesn't give me any cough syrup sort of uh, sensation or cough drop sensation at all. And it's a very sort of natural blackberry flavor. It doesn't taste like a candied blackberry flavor. Vaping this juice, I can almost kind of taste like the blackberry seeds that are in blackberries, like the crunchy little seed bits. I can actually kind of taste that in this juice. And it's all one cohesive flavor. It's not like blackberry on the inhale, lemonade on the exhale. It's like blackberry lemonade. Blackberry might be a little bit more overpowering than the lemonade component, but it still tastes like one kind of cohesive flavor. It's honestly, it's a little bit peculiar. As I was vaping it and trying to evaluate what I was tasting, it just started tasting real peculiar. And maybe peculiar isn't the right word. I feel like this is a I don't want to, I don't know what's acquired. Yes, I feel like this might be a little bit of an acquired taste. It's definitely not too sweet. The lemonade is refreshing. The blackberry is sweet and doesn't taste like cough syrup. It's fairly well balanced. It's just weird. It is also a little bit 
on the throaty side. Both of these components, and I'm not saying that these are the only two flavors in here. You can say that it's a blackberry lemonade, but it can have a multitude of components in there. But these two flavors on their own, blackberry and lemonade, are both very sort of throaty flavors. So them together makes this a very throaty feeling juice. And not like a high nicotine, like throat tightening type of juice. This is a very throaty juice. I can just, I can feel it. It feels very substantial, I guess. It feels very throaty. And I'm not saying that's like a negative thing or a positive thing. I'm not huge into really throaty juices. There are some that I really, really do love the throaty sensation from. This is one of those that gives me that like throaty sensation. It's nice. It's very nice. I actually really like the blackberry in this. That's This is the first, this might be the first blackberry flavored juice that I genuinely enjoy. Anyway, yeah, cool. There you go. Bell Island from Independent Vapor Company. I'm going to put some links down in the description where you can check this out. Clicking over on their website, it looks like you can get 100 mil for 25 bucks. So I feel like, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's a pretty reasonable, it's a pretty reasonable price for a 100 mil bottle of juice. And once again, huge shout out to uh, Oh My Lanta for sending over the juices. I just got some new juices that I'm really excited about for possible random juice taste in the vlog. I love this segment. I just like evaluating juices. What we're going to do is, well, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go blow my nose, but then we're going to come back. We're going to close out this vlog the right way. Favorite comments of the week. Okay. Well, uh, quick update. My nose has been blown and it is time it's time to look at some favorite comments of the week. I got a bunch of them that have been piling up. And once again, I want to give a shout out to Nico. And I promise next week in the vlog, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Nico. Nico's a dude in Finland who's been helping me out with favorite comments of the week. He's just an all around really nice guy. And I'd like to talk about him a little bit more. We're going to do some getting to know, getting to know Nico from Finland next week. I promise. And I know I've been saying that for a while, but next week we're going to do it, Nico. Watch out. <laughs> I don't know why this one's so funny to me, but Wavy Baby Productions uh, left a comment on the bro trip to Dumont and Dunes and said, yeah, I would have totally clicked off this video if it wasn't an RS Turbo. <laughs> I was giving Dwayne a hard time. I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, I don't know anything about the Can-Am RS Turbo or the, you know, the Razor or the other, any other dune buggies. I know zero about them. So I was kind of just giving Dwayne a hard time there. Uh, this was a, <laughs> this guy's mad. He's so mad. Uh, I'm, I'm going to edit out his name and avatar, but he says, uh, they named it cocaine because they fucking wanted to. If you don't like the name, then don't vape it. Shut the fuck up with your PC bullshit about vape names and branding. It's fucking ridiculous. You will never be taken seriously or be brought to the mainstream by caving into political pressure and scare tactics from anti-vapers. We can name our juices and brand our products any fucking way we want. The antis are still going to come after vaping regardless. You can put an old man on the logo and call it poop flavor and they would still say it's appealing to children. Fuck them and fuck you. Yeah. Yeah, he was really mad. He might still be really mad. And everybody knows the best way to rally the troops behind together to common cause to fight vaping is to tell them, fuck you. Good. Uh, real good. And, and you're right. You can name your juice whatever you want. And I have the right to make fun of whatever you name your juice. That's how this works. Fucking asshole. <laughs> uh, this was on the ECC video. Uh, Salvatore left a comment and said, how much is cool the blue hair girl? <laughs> I don't know. How much is cool the blue hair girl? I'll have to ask Jess. I'll be like, Jess, uh, how much cool is the blue hair girl? I got a comment here from Bill that uh, literally makes no sense. I don't know what this means and I don't know what he's referring to, but he says, Captain Beardless is going to have to pirate battle Captain No Beard from Swashbuckle. And I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what any of that means. I know what those words mean. I just don't know what those words arranged in that sentence means. But anyway, hey, Bill, thanks for the comment. <laughs> 
Vampire Skill left a comment and said, uh, I tried breathing through a sponge. You almost killed me, LOL. Of course, I don't want anyone to go uh, breathing through sponges. I mean, exclusively. I feel like you could hold a sponge up to your mouth and breathe through it a few times and you'll be fine. But don't, like, strap a sponge to your face and try to... Uh, <laughs> try to breathe through it. And I still don't know why I get so weird about airflow and how it sometimes feels like you're breathing through a sponge. Has anybody else experienced this breathing through a sponge thing or is it really only me? Like, there's a very strong possibility it could only be me. All right, let's, uh, let's find one more. Let's do one more. <laughs> This one's just great. Uh, Michael re Michael left a comment and said, uh, stacked Beck mods make me think of those jumbo novelty pencils. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, I, I, you know what? I have a few stacked Beck mods and overall... I'm just not really a huge fan of stacked tube mech mods. I'm just going to come out and say it. I don't really like stacked tube mech mods. Like, I like series. Don't get me wrong, but you can get series box mods where you don't necessarily have to stack two batteries on top of each other to get that high volt sort of warm vape that people are after. Not to mention that a lot of new batteries that I got, like all of my new VTC5s, they don't work in a stacked tube mech mod. The positive on these batteries is a little bit too recessed for them to come in contact with each other. And a lot of my batteries don't even work in stacked tube mech mods. Stacked tube mech mods are, are fine, they're cool, whatever, I get it, they work. They're just not for me because you can get that same warmth out of a regulated device. You can get that same warmth out of an unregulated series device. If you really want to go series, you can do it that way. I'm just not a huge fan of stacked two mech mods, and they do. They look like those jumbo novelty pencils. In fact, when I see them, it makes me think that they're like a novelty vape thing. You know what I mean? When people put together like 12 tubes, you know, and they're like, well, let's try this thing out. You kind of go, oh, all right. That's exactly, uh, that's exactly what those remind me of. Anyway, Michael, thank you so much for writing in. So yeah, wow, that's it. I think we're done. I think we're done with this here vlog and I feel pretty good about it. Let me take a quick look around the room and make sure I didn't forget anything. We're good. We're, we are good. We are good on this vlog, everybody. Well, yeah, that brings us to the end of the vlog. Once again, I want to thank everybody for watching. Those that do make it to this part, this end of the vlog, you are absolutely my favorite people. And if I ever run into you in real life, real life I definitely, definitely, definitely owe you a hug. Thank you for the support. Anyway, we're getting back on track. We're going to have reviews. We're going to have vlogs. We're going to have a whole bunch of bitching stuff. I'm headed up to the UK in April, and uh, I'm going to be vlogging that as well. And then in August, we got ECC Southern California again. I'm really stoked. I love ECC. I'm glad, uh, pardon me, they're doing one in August down here in Southern California. I wish I hadn't burped. <laughs> right there. I wish I hadn't burped right there either. <laughs> I don't know exactly uh, what other vape events I'm going to be getting to. I'm probably going to miss the NVE event at Foxwoods, and I'm probably going to miss uh, Detroit ECC because of the UK. And there's also tentative plans for a tour still sometime this year on the East Coast, as well as heading back to Sweden. I have, I'm dying. I'm dying to go back to Sweden. I loved it. It was my favorite. I want to be in Sweden all the time. That's what I got, everybody. I'm going to grab my Aug Vape V200 here with that Coil Art Mage GTA and my Poet Black Tea Juice. And it's now officially time for me to end this vlog. And wow, haven't I ended a vlog in a while? I don't remember what I say. Anyway, that's what I, <laughs> that's what I got for today, everybody. As always, thank you so much for watching. And as always, more importantly, let's keep on vaping. Probably not as cool as I think.